This week on our Wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast, we're looking at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As, as we've seen, it's, it's absolutely crucial to our salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 will tell us that without the resurrection, our, we're, we're, pit, we're pitiful people. We have no hope, and that would be the case. The cross was absolutely essential. We know that. He died on the cross in our place. He took our sins upon himself. Without that sacrifice on the part of Christ, you and I could never be saved. But the cross was incomplete without the resurrection. The resurrection was essential. And so, so important that we understand that truth and we believe it and we proclaim it when we tell people about the good news of Christ. We're looking at now some of the proofs of the resurrection. And the number one proof of the resurrection is uh, the empty tomb. And we're going, to go, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 28. And one of the narratives in the Gospels that talk about this uh, resurrection. We see the event here in verse 1. It says that after, now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing uh, was white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him, and it became like dead men. So we'll start there. Uh, we have the, uh, the ladies coming to the tomb, not the men, not the disciples at this point, or the apostles, but, but these ladies who had ministered to Jesus, had attended to Jesus, and believed in Jesus. They've come to the tomb uh, to, to prepare his body for death. It hadn't been prepared properly, uh, so they wanted to do that. So they're not looking for the resurrection. I think that's essential. They... They do not yet grasp the truth of the resurrection. Jesus had told them on more than one occasion of the resurrection, but they had not understood that. And so when they come, they're not prepared. So when they, they see the empty tomb, uh, they are as shocked as you and I would have been. And uh, that helps us understand that the uh, resurrection was not something they dreamed up or uh, hallucinated about. They were not expecting it. And therefore, when it happened, when they, they saw the evidence, it was a strong proof that it had happened. But we start in verse 4 with the guards, or we move forward to the guards. When the guards saw this angel come and roll back the stone, and apparently the Lord allowed that to be seen, and uh, they are uh, absolutely petrified. Wouldn't you be? I mean, you've been there guarding the tomb all these days, and suddenly... Uh, this uh, unbelievable angel comes and rolls the stone back. It doesn't say they saw Jesus come forth, but we do find that the tomb is empty. Whether they saw that or not, uh, we're not told about it. In verse 5, the angel said to the women, they don't, the angel doesn't talk to the guards. Uh, they're petrified. They perhaps are paralyzed in fear. But he does talk to the women. He says, do not be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Come see the place where he was lying. Uh, a couple of things we could mention here. Uh, Jesus, it wasn't necessary for that stone to be rolled away for Jesus to resurrect. And had it been necessary, he could have done it himself. He is the Son of God. Uh, I think the, the whole purpose behind the rolling of the stone away was to give proof of the empty tomb. The guards now would look in. There was nobody there. Uh, they had not seen Jesus come out either, I don't think. But they had seen this empty tomb, and they'd seen the angels. So when they left, they, uh, they knew it was empty. The women, well, they could look in. What would they see? Nothing except the grave clothing. And the grave, the grave clothes were there, but the body wasn't there. And so the stone is rolled away, not for the sake of Jesus being able to escape, but so that we could recognize the tomb is empty. Powerful proof for the resurrection of Christ. Verse 7, go quickly and tell his disciples and that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So go tell the disciples, the, the, the apostles, and Jesus is going to go to Galilee uh, to meet them there. And at the end of chapter 28, he does meet them there, and they are uh, they see him. Verse 16, And the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. 
And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some were doubtful, including uh, Thomas, as we know. So they go and they see him, Jesus there. They actually see him. And what do they do? They recognize that this is not a human being like we know. This is the true God-man, and they worship him as they properly should. The resurrection was proof of his deity, of his messiahship, and of the fact that he is our savior. And so they bow down as they should, and they worship him. The tomb is empty. Everybody knows it's empty. So how are you going to explain that if you're going to reject Christ? Well, we'll see about that tomorrow. <laughs>